Thanks for the clean air. Good morning, Mr. O'Brien. Good morning, Your Honors. May it please the Court, Edward O'Brien appearing on behalf of my client, Mr. Joshua Dargan. Um, the Form 2 Sexual Assault Evidence Collection Kit, Form 2, is open to several grounds of attack and admissibility. Excuse me, did the defendant object to the admission of that Form 2? Uh, yes, Your Honor. There was a, uh, right at the beginning of the trial, in, uh, in Volume 1, <clears throat> pages 5 through 12 of the uh, transcript, there was a motion in limine that was filed. Um, the uh, objection was argued, starting with the defense objection to the complainant's statements uh, that Mary Griffin, the same nurse, had written on the form. Um, and went into a, a discussion, uh, a general discussion of Form 2's admissibility. The uh, trial judge uh, specifically <coughs> noted, she said to the uh, defense counsel, I have uh, considered your motion um, and uh, will allow the motion only as far as the following. She excluded Form 3 in its entirety, and uh, the judge ordered the, uh, a few redactions on the second page of Form 2. And then also, I believe on page 11 or 12, noted, she said, I note your objection, Mr. Sweeney, <coughs> but my ruling stands. And you, and you are saying that the <coughs> noting, because the Commonwealth argues, well, it had to be repeated at trial, and this was, this was motion eliminate heard before trial, right? right. Yeah. And, this and, is you're, and you're saying, I, correct. I take it, your point is that, that if the judge said, I note your objection, that was really understood as carrying through. Is that it definitely it was very specific. I note your objection, Mr. Sweeney, uh, for, the, for the record. Um, and the judge's ruling was uh, emphatic uh, in, in, that, in that regard. I think if the court uh, reviews, uh, especially pages uh, 11 uh, to 12, um, and the trial judge specifically states, I note your objection, Mr. Sweeney, but Form 2 is coming in with those redactions. Yeah, however, we've, we've held that uh, motions in limine don't preserve your right and that the objection has to come during trial. Well, I, I think this is an instance, Your Honor, where the judge made her position particularly clear. Uh, there is another part uh, during the trial um, uh, that uh, the defense counsel again raises uh, the Form 2 and the judge repeats her, her position. She said it's, it's coming in with those redactions. Um, so you're saying the objection would have been futile? Absolutely, Your Honor, because the judge made her position uh, extremely clear uh, to defense counsel that she was not changing her mind, and any further uh, objection would have been futile, uh, yes. Hospital records come in independently, obviously, of whether there's um, <coughs> Their first, I mean, just focus on the hospital record for itself. And I'm looking at Commonwealth versus DeMonte. Yes. And we said the following hospital record, or a hospital record containing the following information, was admissible. The intake form reported that the victim was assaulted, uh, reported being assaulted, reported being struck in the face with a fist, having a plastic container thrown at her, which struck her in the forehead. The diagnosis is assault. Uh, the victim says she was assaulted and uh, assaulted to the face with closed fist, kicked to the right thigh. All of that information was in the hospital intake form, and we said that was fine. What's different no, about this? Not the diagnosis. Excuse me? Not the diagnosis in that case. Just the diagnosis part, I think. I'm missing something here. Uh, form, I'm talking on Form 2. Well, I, I think uh, uh, approaching... Uh, that on it for a couple of reasons, Your Honor. Um, uh, the defense maintains that Form 2 is not a hospital record, doesn't qualify as a hospital record, uh, because its purpose is for the collection of <coughs> evidence to be used in a criminal prosecution. Well, well that's one purpose. Pardon me, Your Honor? That's one purpose. The other purpose is, is to affect treatment to the patient. Well, that is what Mary Griffin mentioned a couple of other reasons that, um, that the form is used for, but primarily we maintain that, that uh, the first and primary purpose of this form 
is for the purpose of collecting evidence to be used in criminal prosecution. Mary Griffin herself, when asked on direct what is the purpose of the form is, stated this is so the lab can identify what to do, basically. And then she added, oh, and it also, if, if pregnancy prophylactics have to be given. But primarily the purpose, uh, as its title, Sexual Assault Evidence Collection Kit. And I think one of the things uh, in response uh, uh, to your uh, point, uh, Justice Cordy, is that taking and looking at Form 2 as a whole, uh, the way it's phrased amounts to um, a uh, ultimate conclusion of the, that the fact that, uh, of what the complainant states actually happen. Well, let, but, but that, it, let, let, me, let me go back. Uh, Justice Bonsford is right. The, <clears throat> the diagnosis being assault should have come out, but all of the reported uh, acts of assault were found to be properly within a hospital record and properly uh, admissible. Um, and again, I'm, th that seems to be what happened here. This is what this person did to me. He hit me here. He touched me there. Uh, so I, I'm just trying to understand how that's so good. Well, I, I think you have to take a look at the form as, as, as a whole, including its, its title. I'm going to make the argument that it is very similar to a diagnosis of a sexual assault because it presupposes that a sexual assault occurred. You have uh, evidence that... Well, whenever there's an assault and there's a description of what happened in the hospital record, that's the doctors need to know, where were you hit, where were you struck? I mean, that, that <coughs> presumes the person was hit and struck. Well, here, the, the, the very title of the form, Sexual Assault Evidence Collection Kit, presupposes a, result, a sexual assault, and all of the references to assault, assailant's information, uh, is uh, referring to a sexual assault. Okay, There's nothing. Sorry. I'm sorry, go ahead. Okay. Where, where is there a diagnosis, apart from what the form says, where is there a diagnosis of a sexual assault? Where is there any finding by Nurse Griffin that this indeed was a sexual assault? I don't see it. <clears throat> I, I see it in the totality of the form in combination with uh, Mary Griffin's signature uh, at, at the bottom. She's putting her official expert imprimatur on a form. She is signing off. The title of the document, again, presupposes that a sexual assault occurred, and it is a repetition. And and. Again, this is a repetition of details of a sexual assault, which is prejudicial because... Okay, well, I'm a little bit perplexed about that because, well, I'm, there are two, two, two questions, I guess. One is, do you disagree that in general, hospital records, apart from the confrontation clause, are viewed as admissible hearsay pursuant to statute? It, it is an exception to the hearsay rule. Okay, so, so it comes in as a matter of statute. Except that all references uh, as to liability uh, should be excluded, okay, and, and they what, are not admissible. And what do you say that means? And I'm, and I'm saying that, that the contents of this document it is replete, intrinsic in this document, is an opinion of liability. No, I don't see any. I, you have my, I asked you to point to any, any opinion by any nurse or that this that uh, that after after all this data i give the opinion that this is a sexual assault i don't see it well, because all the questions are all the way. questions it starts from the title it it okay, so this you say the form itself but of course there's well your client i guess your client never objected or, or never sought redaction of the word assault or assailant Correct. I, I would say, Your Honor, that initially uh, the motion as phrased and the initial argument began with the defense attempt to redact the uh, complainant's statements. That argument turned into a general argument about the form, whether the form was admissible. And the uh, trial judge ended up ruling that the form was admissible except with certain redactions, and she struck the entire form three. So. Uh, my reading of, of counsel's argument 
goes from a very specific argument to a general one. It was treated by the trial judge as a general argument on the admission, on the admissibility of Form 2. So your, your, your position is that while an opening, it's permissible for you, as it certainly is, for your for the attorney at trial to say, listen, jury, to the to the who she spoke to after the incident. She spoke to the 911 person. She spoke to three or four people, and she never mentioned a rape. And your view then is that it's impermissible for the prosecution to say, to offer evidence to say, wait, when she was in the hospital and spoke to a nurse, she mentioned the rape. The position in this, what actually happened in, in this case, Your Honor, is, is, a, is a little unique because the, uh, this went in and was argued on the basis of it being a hospital record and was admitted pursuant to the statute. It was not admitted pursuant to any other exceptions to the hearsay rule, uh, such as uh, a recent, you know, a, a statement to rebut recent contrivance. So uh, the parties didn't argue its admissibility under any other hearsay exception. The court did not then consider <laughs> whether the document and its contents met all of those uh, hearsay exceptions, such as uh, a prior consistent statement to rebut a theory recent contrivance. Because if <clears throat> admitted under that theory, the court then has to give a limiting instruction. I, I, I understand that, but, 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 but answer this question. Was it inappropriate for a judge, in view of the opening statement of the defense counsel, to admit these statements in for at least some purpose? Yes or no? The, I, I, I would say no. The only purpose that this document... That, so, the, so, so, the, so, so, so you're saying it's okay then, we as a court should say it's permissible for the defense to argue that she never mentioned anything about rape, and the jury then would have to deliberate without realizing that she actually did that same day mention something about rape. Perhaps the Commonwealth could have asked uh, Mary Griffin questions concerning the complainant's disclosure. But again, the Commonwealth picked the first complaint witness in this case as the 911 dispatcher. But that's different from, from what Justice Gantz is trying to ask you that the Commonwealth giving, permitting the Commonwealth to rebut the suggestion of recent contrivance. Isn't, isn't your, wouldn't you, wouldn't you have to agree that, that it didn't happen in this case, but that it, perhaps it could have come in as a prior consistent statement? It wasn't treated that way, but theoretically it could have come in that In way. a different case. You, you mean, Your Honor, in a, in a different well, case? it wasn't in this case, but as, as a theoretical matter, if you've got the, the defense attorney arguing she, she didn't tell him, 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 her, her. Yes. And there's that some would... evidence that on the same day she did say to the nurse, he put his finger, th that, that the Commonwealth should be able to get at that in some fashion. Oh, I, I agree. No, I, I, I do agree. I just, I just wanted to make it clear that in, in this particular case, right. I, the I'm, jury never had any benefit of any limiting right. instructions. Right. This form went in substantively. Right. Can, can I ask you this factual question? This is a DPH nurse. This is not a, a nurse who That works is, for the hospital. She's an outsider. Right. It, it was at Toby Hospital? Sorry? Yes. Okay. So does somebody from the hospital call the Department of Public Health and she comes down, or how does that work? I think that I'm not sure if, if she's notified by the police. It's really not in the, I can't recall it being in the uh, record, but she is called. So she, she arrives at the hospital, and, and she but her arrives employer at the hospital. is the Department of Public Health, and she brings this form with her? Brings the form with her, and then... And, and, but leaves it as part of the hospital they record? They stick it into the hospital record so that it's admissible, and, and I would submit that this is a means the Commonwealth is using to violate King through the back door. Mr. O'Brien, um, just f uh, for the sake of argument, if we disagree with the appeals court that this was not a prior consistent statement and, and conclude that this was not a prior consistent statement, and if we were to disagree with you uh, that this was a, uh, and conclude that this was in fact a hospital record and it was properly admissible, um, what, what is a judge to do when admitting a hospital record, which is admissible under the hearsay exception, which is admissible for all purposes, 
What is a judge to do on admitting that kind of evidence to avoid a Crawford problem? Can a judge say, I'm admitting this as a hospital record, but you cannot use it uh, for proof of the facts contained therein? Can, you can only be used as a prior consistent statement, if at all? I, I would agree with that. And obviously, if the, uh, the declarant testifies there's not a Crawford problem, so I, I, I would say... There was no Crawford problem in this case, because no. you had both the writer and the, both, and the victim uh, Griffin, testifying. Yes, but the, the bigger problem, aside from the two, uh, 70, uh, 233.79, is that Arana, uh, I'm, I'm arguing that Arana left the door open for the defense to argue here that just because the document may be admissible under some separate theory, then that does not guarantee its admissibility because this document serves only for the impermissible reason to corroborate the credibility of the complainant and repeat details of the assault. Well, it, this document could have been perfectly okay, it seems to me, it, with a few redactions if you had taken out the sexual at the top and, and a couple of other things that would have been would have been fine. Did anybody come up with that and say we just need to redact a few words and there's no problem here? Well, that was the attempt, Your Honor, is to redact and the judge uh, just redacted a couple of, of things saying uh, references to uh, the uh, de defendant stating, telling the complainant to shut up. Uh, he overpowered me bigger than I am um, and that kind of thing. But the Commonwealth holds this up in front of the jury in closing and reads from it and says put finger in vagina and says to the jury there's the rape and and that's a huge problem. I understand but and I understand that the motion in limine was ruled on um, originally but the judge seemed to be amenable to redaction and I'm, yes. did the defendant suggest making a few more redactions? I think that uh, yes, yes, I believe in that, that, that he did. And again, the trial judge said, no, that's as far. This is uh, admissible, the rest of the contents of the form, as um, for medical purposes, uh, and treatment and medical treatment and history. Now, if I may, one, the uh, defense counsel in closing asked the jury to take a look at this document as well. Yes. So you're going well, to see a notation. I'm calling your attention to it. The nurse says that there's a scratch on the left upper abdominal quadrant, nothing about breast, and I'm going to tell you that where that is because you can figure it out for yourself. There's nothing on the chest. It's being used yes, by are. defense counsel to support his De position. Defense counsel could have cross-examined the same nurse about the absence of, of any scratches or physical findings to the complainant's breast or genitalia. He could have, he could have without this going in, Defense counsel could have said to the say nurse, now you found that the complainant's genital, genitalia was in normal limits. Defense counsel, you know, since this was already into evidence, he used it. Thank you, Mr. O'Brien. Thank you. Ms. Lee? Good morning. May it please the court, Mary Lee, Assistant District Attorney from the Plymouth District for the Commonwealth. Um, I'll address my comments to uh, the first could, issue. Could I just ask you this question? Yes. Let, let's assume that you had a Form 3 and it said Assault Evidence Collection Kit or Assault Evidence Collection or Assault Collection of Evidence. And what happened was following up on Justice Botsford's question, the call went not to a nurse at DPH, um, or maybe even a nurse at DPH, and um, it, it said, um, you know, the, the, the patient is sitting and, you know, it's just been, you know, bashed about the head, mm -hmm. fight outside a bar, and... Um, a nurse or a state trooper or anybody else fills it out and because of perfectly permissible reasons it <coughs> says a white copy of the form should go into the hospital records. Mm -hmm. Very helpful to the hospital. Is that admissible under the statute? I would suggest that the uh, statute says that it has to be done, has to relate to 
treatment and medical history of such cases. That's in Chapter 236. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is treatment. 79. This is treatment because you've got somebody who comes from, uh, you know, your office or, I mean, it's, it's if, he very helpful. If it's, if it's done for the purposes of treatment and uh, medical history, then the judge, and it's a hospital record maintained by the hospital. Well, it's something, it's not a, ho it's a hospital record <coughs> only in the sense it was done by a third party um, that is not a treating party, but it is helpful to put it into the hospital record. I think when you get to the part about it's not a treating party and that the focus of this hypothetical document that you're talking about is evidence collection, then I think that's when... I'm not sure it's evidence collection. I think it is, it's a combination. This one happens to be sexual. I'm right. just talking about assault. Well, look, Obviously, the word assault is supposed to be redacted. No, 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 no. I, I, that, but that's not my point. My point uh, is there are lots of reasons why, very, very good reasons why there would be collaboration, perfectly permissible collaboration, between a private hospital, a public mm -hmm. hospital, any hospital, a clinic, and, you what know. I, my answer to your question is that a trial judge would look at that document that is kept by the hospital and determine one, is it a hospital record? Two, was it done? I understand, but it, was if, it related if the hospital to treatment record, and medical history? And if it was, the judge would have discretion to let it in. Yes, so but, I'm, but I'm, I'm pushing a little by saying, should we be saying something that the mere fact that it was in the hospital record and actually has something that says a retain white copy of form for hospital records, I have no idea where that comes from. I take it it did not come from the hospital. These were not hospital forms. In my case, mm -hmm. this case. form two was part of the hospital record. Uh, is it a no, hospital form? No, 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 form? no, but the no, Department oh, of Public Health makes the form, doesn't it? I believe it does, but the person so, who fills out the form is Mary Griffin, who's an employee of the Department of Public Health, but when she is filling out that form, she is examining I understand the that. victim, and she's the person at Toby Hospital who examined the victim. You know, no, but you can have anybody so, examine the well, victim. It's, it's akin to calling in an expert. I have a severe head injury, and we don't, at Toby Hospital, we're a small local hospital, we don't have somebody who deals with that kind of head injury. So we call the guy who comes down and looks at the person. The only other alternative is to med flight the person out. So in this situation, they have a sexual assault nurse examiner who comes down and she services particular hospitals um, including Caritas, which she testified to in her testimony, and she got a call. It, uh, her testimony doesn't say who she got the call from, whether it was the hospital or whether it was the police. But she got a call, and she came down, and she examined Would the victim. Would it make a difference? I think in, in the words, judge's discretion, the ju trial no, 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 judge's no, no, discretion, it, it could make a difference. Would it make a difference who called her? I think that could make a difference. If the purpose of the uh, examination is not for medical treatment, but for evidence collection. No, 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 it's not, I mean, in other words, it might be, for example, that the police called her. Now, the fact that the police called her, to me, doesn't necessarily doesn't say it's for evidence collection. Right, because she came down and examined the person, and therefore the record that she created, she's a nurse, she was at Toby Hospital, and she was the person who examined the victim at Toby Hospital, she created a form, and the form became part of the record. And therefore, the judge was well within her discretion <coughs> in saying this is a hospital record. So, so what's, know what's the mechanical treatment. rule that, that we should articulate for <coughs> purposes of incorporating uh, this form that was prepared by a non-hospital employee into the hospital record? What should that look like? The mechanical rule is the same. It's, in, it's what I'm saying in the statute. So it's what a record that's kept and maintained by a hospital. This was summonsed in from the hospital and was certified by the hospital, this is part of our hospital records. And then the trial judge looks at it and under the grant of discretion from the legislature in the statute, the trial judge then makes that determination, properly exercising her discretion, is this a hospital record? Yes, it was maintained by the hospital, it's certified by the hospital, came in under summons from the hospital. So let me, is just it let me ask related? you this, so, so if, we, if we conclude, for example, that the primary purpose I'm looking at case status, evidence mm -hmm. collection reported to the police, DSS involved with straining order before. The last two sections of the form, yes. No, or even right assailant, in, assailant mm -hmm. information. Not so sure that that's relevant. That's uh, the second section, yes. The second section. Mm -hmm. 
Um, if I could answer your question, on the primary purpose, that is not the standard that's in the statute. The standard in the statute is it relates to the treatment and medical history of I, such I cases. I understand that, but if something... It doesn't have to be the primary purpose. No, but if it relates to almost any form, and so I'm saying that you could have, for example, um, a state trooper who had some medical training and, in fact, had investigated many, many allegations of sexual assault, it seems to me that none of this be perfectly frank, to be perfectly frank, I don't have a lot of medical training. In fact, I have zero medical training. But I think I could ask every single one of these questions. The fact that she's a nurse may be relevant in some other kinds of things. Sure, we could both ask those questions, but what, it's what she then does with that information, which we hear about in her testimony. Form do we two. know if anyone else at the hospital examined this patient? We do. What, what, no, nobody else examined her, although she did go for a CAT scan prior to her um, uh, uh, in, um, examination. With this was, is it in the record that this examination was the one that served as the examination for treatment of the patient? Yes, the, um, the victim <clears throat> was injured during the attack at approximately 7.15, 7.30. The police are getting there around 7.30. She gets to Toby Hospital by means of ambulance. Within a minute, we hear from one of the EMTs in the ambulance. Um, so there's obviously whatever treatment goes on in an ambulance en route to the hospital in that short amount of time. And then the nurse, um, the, the male nurse who testified, I believe his name is Glover, um, he testified and he said that he didn't ask her a lot of questions. They basically, you know, put her in a place, make her comfortable until the SANE nurse arrives. But because she had numerous welts all over her head and uh, many head injuries, there was a CAT scan that was given, I, and a, it appears from his testimony that CAT scan occurred prior to Mary Griffin's arrival. And, and description of assailant obviously is not relevant to treatment or diagnosis, but in this I, case there was no contest about the assailant. That, the defendant admitted there, there was, a was a stipulation. An, an A and B, oh, no. but, but no rape. If I could just address that and you know and you may disagree with me on this but I, I would say that can relate to medical treatment because if a person has been attacked by someone who's a family member then the hospital may bring down a counselor or they may bring down a psychiatrist or psychologist to assess for um, battered women's syndrome or post-traumatic stress disorder uh, you know I'm not a doctor and I, I don't need to be a doctor and neither does a trial judge they can look at these records and say is there some relation to um, treatment and medical history so section one is medical history. Section two, if you don't agree with me that the assailant might be related to medical treatment if the answer is not a stranger, um, fine. But in this se section, section fact one is medical history? It's section one is, uh, it's, they're not labeled number one. The first section says patient information. That's I don't her, think that's medical history. That's, and it's uh, vital statistics. It gives you a baseline, it gives you her age. No, 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 it doesn't. It just asks for. Um, it has, it, you her know. date of birth, it has her race. It well, has what, her what if a good family. Samaritan picks up somebody on the side of the road and drives them, and the person says, you've got to take me to a hospital, drives them to the hospital. In the, in the course of that travel, the passenger starts describing what happened to the passenger that, that, that required immediate medical attention, and then the person passed out. Mm -hmm. They get to the hospital, and hospital employees come and take this person out. Somebody comes out and says, what's this all about? And the driver of the car starts explaining what the person had told them. Gets it written into the <coughs> hospital report. Is that part of the hospital report? If the hospital personnel are taking that information down, and of course, this is far afield from our case here, but if the hospital personnel are taking that information down and using it for the purposes of medical treatment or it's related to medical treatment, then I would suggest that that is something that the judge could, in her discretion, say that's admissible here, but that's not what we have here. This is a nurse. A can, nurse I, can I ask you a second? the examination. I, yes. uh, understood. But I, I take it you agree that at the top of Form 2, this title Sexual Assault Evidence Collection Kit and this other big capital letter Information assault. Pertaining to Assault, those should not have been included. They Under DeMonte, they're supposed to re be redacted. So what those about should have been the, redacted. What about the, the so-called patient history, city or town of assault? Question number five. Question Neighborhood. number five, where him asked. Yeah. Um, the, um, I would suggest those are, those, that's the vital statistics that you fill out anytime you're filling out any kind of medical record. They want to know that, how, you know, your age. They ask so for your race. So there were assault. 
assaults. The use of the word assault. But here, here though. But the defendant didn't object the to the word assault. Here the defendant didn't object and the defendant that it was, I mean, he agreed there was an assault. Stipulated there was a, an assault. The only question is, was it a sexual assault? That was the only question at trial. He stipulated he was the assailant and that there was, um, that there was an assault. And of course, that stipulation is then also fortified by the uh, numerous pictures of the physical injuries that this victim um, incurred during this attack. My next question is, uh, would you agree with me that this was not offered, nor was it admitted as a, to rebut a recent contrivance? I would agree with right. you. This was and, admitted as a hospital record. Right. And if it had been admitted as such, there would have been, an, there would have been required a limiting instruction. Yes. And there was none been. given here, so this could be used substantively, just not for purposes right. of rehabilitation. Yes. Okay. And I would suggest that's what the statute requires. And so the defendant now has to show an abuse of discretion for permitting that evidence in. And, I would, and the part that he's very concerned about, I mean, he doesn't care that much about patient information. What he cares about is the acts described by the patient in the, what's the third section there. Um, and that's the part he doesn't like. And that is the part that is actually very much towards medical purposes. They want to know whether there's transfer of bodily fluids. And Mary Griffin, the nurse, described that you use that information to determine if you need to treat for STDs. You need to determine whether you need the morning after pill or plan B. You need to determine whether there should be an HIV or AIDS test. All of those things, the transfer of and, and of course even just infections. If there's any kind of open wound, you're going to have to treat that. And so the transfer of bodily fluids and the places where the victim was um, suffered force and suffered injury, that's where Mary Griffin then looked. Do I see any evidence of injuries there, and do those injuries need treatment? So, so, so there's, a, a, there's, the a, there's, a, treatment. there's a potential Crawford problem when it's admitted as a, as a hospital record. What, what should a judge do if, if, the, if the, the Crawford problem doesn't go away? I would suggest there's not a potential Crawford problem because um, it's a business record of the hospital, and so it's certainly, certainly not in this case. Let's, let's start with this case. This Both is not a business record of the hospital. This no, is gathered this for purposes of investigation, quite clearly. If, I'm, if I may start, no, we don't have no, a Crawford there's issue. There's no Crawford issue okay. in this case, but the form <laughs> itself, it seems to me, raises Crawford every, problems. Every time you have a piece of hearsay coming in, obviously the trial judge is going to have to look towards, do I have a constitutional Crawford issue? And, um, but this is a little bit. This, this is this, this is, is a little bit unique here. in that you have a somewhat unique situation. The saying, both S A N E and S A I N, is that there's a, the choice is we only want one person speaking to this individual who's been traumatized. We don't want we don't want a nurse asking these right. questions and then the police asking these questions. So they merge mm -hmm. the questioning into one person. So that's the whole point. What do you say is the for us the consequence of the fact that she's playing this dual role? She's supposed to be a nurse and she's supposed to if, be an evidence collector. I don't think there's a consequence if it's related to medical treatment. And this trial judge looked through the record. She was open to suggestions of other redactions. The defendant didn't request the other redactions, except to say exclude the whole thing. She didn't just exclude mere words. She took out all of Form 3, which was the victim's freehand description of what the um, assault was. I would suggest this case is consistent with the other hospital and medical records cases. It's different from Irana. Irana was a problem of relevance. The medical testimony in Irana was that it, it indicated that other assaults or other acts that were not charged and were not testified to by the victim had, had occurred. That's not the situation here. If this victim had not alleged a rape, would we even be worried about this record that's before us if this was just the horrible beating that she received? And the answer to that is no, because hospital records are admissible substantively to prove what they if say. If she wasn't complaining of rape, we would never have a record like this. We, we may very well have a record like that. We, we, that describes all us. the injuries and how they occur, yes. We wouldn't, we wouldn't have a form that's, I mean, there wouldn't be a form from the Department of Public Health saying sexual assault evidence kit. Well, and that's why the trial judge has discretion to determine whether a particular form fits the statute. She did so here, and the defendant has not shown an abuse of discretion. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Lee.